Professor Gretchen Benedicts, uh, Curtin University in Perth. Thank you very much for joining us today on Australia in Space TV. Thanks very much for having me. Really delighted to be here. Great. You're with the Space Science and Technology Centre, School of Earth and Planetary Sciences with Curtin University. Uh, just yesterday, we got a media release, the Graduate Certificate in Space Environment. This is a new course at Curtin University. Maybe introduce us to the Graduate Certificate, what it's going to be about, uh, and then we'll also dive into some of the work at the centre. Great, thank you. So the graduate certificate is in space environment. It's designed um, around four classes or units that will allow anybody from any background, but um, people who are generally interested in space to, to understand more about what it means to live and work in space. So the Australian Space Agency is building up the space sector um, by inter uh, interacting a lot with businesses, current businesses, uh, across Australia, but we want to increase the knowledge of how to work in the space environment. So this particular graduate certificate isn't so much about how to build spacecraft, it's more about what happens when you're in space, what happens to the spacecraft out there. Um, so we have four different units. One, it, the, the first unit that's about to be offered in a couple of weeks time is called uh, Exploration of the Solar System and then we have sort of the subtext of foundations of the space industry. And so what that is designed to do is kind of go through what have we learned about the solar system uh, through our exploration and space exploration type um, uh, uh, works uh, that has happened globally across the world using space agencies like NASA and ESA and JAXA and the Chinese Space Agency. Um, but, but importantly, how does that feed to the wider economy? So how does that industry actually go from building things for space and then spinning out to things that we have on Earth that are really helpful or important. And so that first unit is all about kind of making those connections to understanding what it means to go to space, kind of the history of how humans have always interacted with the stars, starting with the Aboriginal folks who have been looking at the stars and doing astronomy for thousands, tens of thousands of years, and then going right on up through uh, how we've started interacting with telescopes and then finally figured out how we get off the earth and then um, also looking to the future. So looking at some options about what would the future look like if we actually end up getting out into space. So that's kind of what the first unit is about. Um, the second two units are much more about how you live and work in space. So what are the, the main issues that you have to be aware of? Like if you're if you're sitting on the moon, for instance, you know, my background here, um, what do you need to know in order to be able to live there? So on Earth, we have built up a whole lot of resilience about how to live and work, how to build things, how to do it in a sustainable way. If we go to the moon, we have a completely different environment to work in. We have a whole bunch of different things that we have to think about. So the next two units are about that, is how do you interact out in space? What are the things that are going to affect any of the satellites that you might have sent any spacecraft, if you set up a habitat on another planet, or if you want to actually set up a mining uh, kind of situation on another planet, what are the things that you're going to have to be aware of? And then the final unit is all about mission planning. So it's about actually going through um, the whole uh, procedure of how you plan a mission, carry it out, what are all the phases that are involved, and, and what are the parts that end up in terms of like project management and, and the things that you need to understand in order to get um, a space mission off the ground, whether it's an Earth observation space mission or a space ex a solar system exploration space mission. So those are the four units, and they're offered one per uh, OUA term. So the, the the whole certificate is offered through Curtin Open Universities Australia. So it's completely online, right. asynchronous learning um, with the ability to interact with the instructors. So I'm one of the instructors. Um, all of the instructors come from the Space Science and Technology Center. So we've all had a lot of experience with interacting with various ways that we live and work in space or understand that environment. 
Would you say it's targeted to industry? Uh, you mentioned there was a sort of a framework for the space industry. Uh, yeah, who would be the sort of the, the core students that you think would be interested in this? Well, I think it could. I personally, I think it could go across um, any industry because space, as an overarching theme, actually uh, covers a whole bunch of things. It's it it is STEM, it is industry, it is engineering, but it also is space policy, it's space health, it's space agriculture. So the target audience is um, the audience that's interested in either taking their their current expertise and applying it in a space way or for industries to understand how that kind of knowledge building leads to the industry that comes out of it. So it's, it's kind of the combination of um, interested people, but kind of building up the mm. entire sector so that more small business can or it kind of come out of it, but also we can start to build up that ecosystem of building knowledge and then the pipeline of how that increases our ability to do other things. So and I was going to say, what type of course is what type of coursework is involved? Uh, is it just reading and learning? But I imagine there's a, an assignment and uh, exam process to this as well. Yeah, so it will. The assessments are very um, self-driven, so it's your ideas. But in the context of space, uh, the the programs will include because it's all online. It's a lot of interactive online um, activity. Uh, the the main assessments will be around. Um, you're kind of telling us back the things that we're trying to teach out there and making sure there's interaction. We're also trying to make sure there's group work because even though it's an online asynchronous unit, I think it's really important to understand that you don't do these things without being on a team. And so there will be group assignments where people will have to figure out how do they work together? How do they manage a project so that they can deliver a product r roughly, um, but understanding like how, how have we gone from that kind of history of, okay, we can send things into space to actually now it's really important that we have the space industry because we get so much information about Earth from our Earth observation satellites, but you know the ability to even go out into the solar system and expand across there is gonna be quite amazing. So, so that's kind of, you're right, the, 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 there will be assessments. There won't be kind of exams per se. It's much more about interact with the information, reflect on it, and come up with an idea using that information to figure out how you could contribute or kind of take your expertise and uh, apply it. And I was looking at the, there's a applying maths, engineering, and some science. Is there any prerequisites to this course? We haven't included any prerequisites. The main idea is that you should understand, if you're interested in this course, there will be maths and physics concepts discussed. Um, some, some nice basic high school maths is, is helpful. We're not necessarily going to go into massive like calculus or anything like <laughs> that. Um, it's much more uh, broad in terms of let's get the ideas out there so that people can start making those connections and start to understand why the maths works and why the physics is important. So that's kind of the baseline of this is, is rather than focus on, okay, we're going to have you build something and, and you have to, you know, use the maths to kind of create a thing, we're going to try and instill the understanding that, okay, here's here's what is out there. Here's how we figured it out. If you want to add to that, here's what you'll have to do. Um, and it will include maths and things like that, but not all the time. So, you know, someone who's doing space law or someone who's doing law, and we want to understand better, how are we going to create space law? You need to understand the environment in, a, yep. in order to be able to, to act on that or, or create that in a, in a sensible way. So no specific prerequisites, but definitely understanding that physics and, and chemistry and maths concepts will always be brought in, but also tied and connected to what we're trying to really get across, which is a basically just a space aware, a, a space awareness yep. is that, you know, space just doesn't work like earth. And so if we're gonna be sending, 
you know, if we we're sending people back to the moon, we're going to try and send people to Mars. But it's not the reason we haven't done it so far is that it's actually really hard, but it's not impossible. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things that uh, it's a fa fascinating area. It sounds like a good step into the environment, space environment, if you're not within the industry. Uh, and mm -hmm. if you are, it's uh, one to at least uh, expand your knowledge and test your own skills uh, and get a good benchmark where you're at. And I imagine that's where it's from. And I'm very interested in myself, uh, given that you can break it down into these four core units. Maybe tell us a little bit about the centre as well and some of the work that you're doing. I've, I've got that you're here as a cosmic mineralogist uh, and a, an astrogeologist. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that, that type of research involve? Well, um, so my particular research has been centered around studying, primarily studying meteorites, but over the years, the connections have gotten bigger and bigger. So initially, I, I would look at a group of meteorites and try to understand what does that tell me about the body that they came from. But it's kind of like going to like four or five disparate places across WA and then trying to say what the geology of WA is. So over time, my, my ideas have gotten more like, okay, well, how do I connect these two real bodies? How do I really expand this out? Because it's really useful and we're getting all kinds of uh, pieces to the puzzle, but kind of making that a broader, bigger picture is where I kind of have ended up. So it's been about finding the sources, where do the meteorites come from, and what does that tell us about the areas that we're looking at? And so it's progressed from looking at meteorites that come from asteroids, to looking at meteorites that come from Mars, to then actually looking at the surface of Mars and trying to understand um, sort of the surface evolution of Mars, because that tells us a lot about what the inner solar system might have been experiencing billions of years ago, millions of years ago. Um, so that's been the sort of the center of my work. And that feeds into overall the Space Science and Technology Center uh, themes of, of we, we kind of are combining science and engineering. So the other big side, so we have, we have science where we look at impact studies, we, we compare uh, impacts on surfaces of other planets to impacts on the surface of Earth. We look at the relationship between impacts and potential resources because there are several areas on Earth where um, they actually are highly, um, highly concentrated in minerals that are important, but they are also right smack dab in the middle of these impact craters. And so trying to understand better that connection and how it relates to what we know from, from outer space. Um, we also have a whole engineering side where we're building CubeSats. We launched the first uh, small CubeSat, BIN R1, um, in 20, I want to say 2021. I should know this better. Yeah. But, well, we I, had Professor uh, Phil Bland on before. It was post-COVID, so it yeah. was 2021. Um, and, and so we are, the, the BIN R team is, is continuing to build new uh, CubeSats. They've they've created a nice plug and play uh, methodology, so payload can take up most of the CubeSat, but also building um, to potentially get to the moon with the Binar Prospector ideas. Um, we're probably the we we I think we are the biggest uh, the largest team dedicated to planetary science in the southern hemisphere from the perspective of the funding that we get and and the 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 research that we do is very much dedicated to planetary looking at solar system exploration um, and so that kind of makes us a really unique um, resource for Australia but also just in general for the public to understand that you know if you want to understand whether this is a meteorite or not you can come to us if you want to you know talk about the the space you know what what the moon looks like or why the moon looks like it does um that's also we're very much in that we've got some people now so we're kind of expanding out and to get to the outer um outer solar system planets and and moons especially so kind of feeding into those icy planets we've got some expertise there um so this the the space science and technology center really is like a hub of planetary um research 
that we hope can feed out into the greater uh, greater population to understand, you know, we have the capacity to help in and to use this, the the techno the SSTC as a as a resource for understanding what the space environment is and how it works. Well, look, you're also a founder, a founding sponsor for the Indo-Pacific Space and Earth Conference in Perth on the yeah. 23rd to 24th of October. So thank you very much for that. And we're very much looking forward to that. And I think that's just what you were talking about there. And even, even back to the graduate certificate in the space environment, it's that space and earth connect connection and then getting that understanding between the two uh, and obviously the industry uh, and the cross-sector uh, aspects of space uh, yep. is very, very important as well. So uh, Professor Gretchen Benedict, Space Te Science and Technology Centre with the School of Earth and Planetary Sp uh, Sciences with Curtin University there in Perth. Thank you very much for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Thank you so much for having me.